Well, Buen Camino there, Pilgrims. Jeremiah Gibbs here. And uh, today we've got a great new episode in our collaboration series with Kate from Wonderlisting Warrior and Nadine from Nadine Walks. We're going to be sharing with you some of our favorite albergas. Um, I hope that you will go ahead and make some notes. Some of these places will be places you're going to want to stay. Uh, and so uh, definitely learn about some great, cool albergas. And uh, I hope that you'll enjoy this week's episode. Okay, so I have to ask... Uh, what was your one or two favorite albergas? What did you love about them? There are so many. Um, two of mine, um, I love Albergue Verde in Hospital mm. del Orbigo. Mm. And it's, this is why I think people that say don't prepare anything, just go. Um, there's a lot of goodness to that. But like some of these places, these albergues, um, like Suzea, also in Zubiri, they're on the outskirts, mm -hmm. right? So if you're just walking and you just stop at the municipal albergue, mm -hmm. you're never going to find them. Mm -hmm. So the Verde had like the most amazing meal I had. It's all vegan. Mm -hmm. um, the bunks were like rustic. It really did feel like you were in a cabin. Um, they had free yoga at the time they were, I think they were building like a, both a pool and a yurt. So mm -hmm. I just love their offerings. And that was kind of, it was like really the end of the meseta and yeah. the gentleman who was running it gave this really powerful speech about, um, kind of what that all means in the context of the Camino and life as you end that, that stage. And then, um, I love one that doesn't get a lot of like recognition at all, but I walked the day the stage before logroño most people stop in los arcos mm -hmm. um i i don't know something i just wasn't feeling i was like i still want to keep walking um so i went on to san sol and the albergue san sol there i love because it was just one big room but it was huge and they didn't fill it with too many bunks so you had noise separation um they had a nice restaurant right there and they had this really cool fountain like big fountain soaking mm -hmm. fountain for your feet and I just remember being like so at peace there. It was just a great vibe. There weren't too many people there, um, but they're enough that you could like have a nice like conversation and just get a nice, like a good night's sleep. So those are two that I really liked. Yeah, I'm trying to remember the names of the places. Mm -hmm. Like I'm so bad about the names of villages and towns and albergues. So so one, so you might have to help me out with where this was on the Camino. I think it was San Nicolas. It was like that little, like almost like a little chapel that didn't have electricity. There were like 12 beds. I think it was run by maybe Italians, Italian monks, maybe. Monks, so I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, we'll put I think the it name was, of it on the, in the video when we do it. I'll put it down on the Okay, good. Thing. And I think it was, af, it was after Burgos, maybe a couple <laughs> stages when you're entering the Meseta. And that's one that kind of like, Kate, you mentioned, like, for the most part, I just kind of showed up, you know, I didn't plan very much on my Camino, but that was one that I had made a little note in my guidebook where I really wanted to stay. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had planned a really short day to get there because they didn't take reservations, only 12 beds. Um, and it just, it was such a special experience. It was one of those places where you had a big communal meal. Everyone helped out to cook. We ate by candlelight. There is a little like blessing and like a foot washing ceremony. I remember reading dinner. that for foot washing. Mm -hmm. It was just one, it was a really special experience. And for me, almost all the more so in that one, because I, in doing a shorter stage, I kind of lost a lot of the people that I had met up to that point. And so I was just in this albergue with brand new, to me anyway, these new pilgrims I hadn't met. And it was just a special experience to, you know, again, meet new people, have new conversations, kind of all be together in this, in the middle, right? It's in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing around. There's the Camino, there's this building, there are fields, and, and that's it. So that one always stood out on my first Camino. It was one of my favorite experiences, for sure. Well, How about you, I, Jeremiah? The one that I would say that just the experience itself was so wonderful, which by the way, I should say, Kate, uh, Albe Verde was the first alberga I'd stayed on the entire Camino because I wow. my first Camino I left León and stayed in Verde oh. the first night. I thought they were all that wonderful. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> is an amazing. That wonderful. <laughs> yeah, and they um, do, did they do like the music show and everything? Like, oh the, yeah, we they're... sung that night and had veg. And at that time, they were doing yoga classes. I don't know if they still do oh. that or not, but um, and I, you know, 
started meeting these pilgrims. I remember I met an Irishman who uh, was wearing blue jeans, one pair of blue jeans for the entire Camino because he had decided to go like two days before he got on the plane. Oh my gosh. I mean, it was just, you know, so it was just, it was, it was, um, it was almost like Jack from Ireland and the way, you know, it was like, yeah. this anyway. Um, but, uh, so, but the experience in the Albergue, my favorite is probably, um, Albergue, uh, I think it's A Revolera. I'm, my Spanish is not like yours, uh, Kate, but, uh, the, it's in Fom Fria. It's the, there's about mm, 12 K after O Sobrero. Um, they have that little village makes their own cheese. It's a soft cheese. It's, it's like goat cheese, but it's made of cow's milk. Um, and they put this honey on it. And the, the alberga is very large. I mean, probably 75 or a hundred beds. Um, and they have this wonderful little communal area, but then the wonder, the best part about then that make, and they have a great bar and all that, but then you go down the back and they have these traditional Galician grass roof huts that oh, cool. and these huge butcher block tables i mean tables that are probably 25 feet long and they serve the meal family style with all these really traditional galician uh stews and all it's just absolutely incredible and um and often that's a night when i'm with students that we have a story time because at that point we're kind of you know several we're about a week or so into our uh student pilgrimage so it's a good night with these big tables and stuff just to be telling each other stories and stuff so um i really love that albergo because of the the food the dinner there is just incredible and the hosts are wonderful too um the other one I love is actually because of the host. It's actually not, I mean, it's a neat building. Uh, La Piedra in Villafranca de Abercio. Um La Piedra is, has uh, the wall. Like if you go up Camino Enduro, the, the steep way out of Villafranca, um, you walk up that super steep drive. Well, the, the downside of that, the alberga backs up into the mountain. And so the back wall wow. of the mountain is the alberga. So basically all That's of the great. rooms have a section of the mountain in there. But the best part <laughs> about the alberga, I mean, besides Villafranca, which is my favorite, one of my favorite towns on, on Camino. If I, if I ever move to Camino, it's probably going to be to Villafranca because I just love it. Um, but uh, they're, the hosts there, Livia and Une, are just absolutely wonderful. And um, one of the first alberg owners I really connected with in part because their English was impeccable. And so it was really easy to connect with them and, and just wonderful hosts. And um, so, yeah, I really love Piedra too. This is making me want to be back in the Camino so badly, you guys. And <laughs> it's so funny because I remember being maybe halfway through the Frances and uh, what I what I've come to call Camino Stoke, right? That like the love for the Camino mm -hmm. it doesn't leave. It hadn't quite hit yet. It really took its time to build up. Like I had like phases of emotional experiences on the Camino, and like the beginning part was amazing, and then I kind of had this little mm -hmm. lull where every day started to feel a little bit the same and. You know, and I remember thinking, man, I don't, this is great. I'm so happy I'm doing this, but I can't imagine doing like this route again. How do these people mm -hmm. come do this three, four, five mm -hmm. times? And like now, I mean, I'm dying to be back. And I'm also thinking about all these places that you missed, right? Because you can only sure. stay one place yeah, at night. Sure. And yeah. a lot of the best places are often, it sounds like, just past some of the, the, the bigger cities where you may end up staying, right? So like, instead of staying in Osebrero, you would go on and stay at the places in, in Fonfria that you mentioned. And mm -hmm. I think you could, you could, it sounds like, and I'm sure you guys have both experienced, you could do the Francais so many times and just like barely even know that you've done it before, like almost have a totally unique experience. Mm -hmm. And I think I've noticed as years go on, like how memory works with, um, like thinking you remember something being one way and then you're like, mm -hmm. I thought that building was on this side. Like I could have <laughs> sworn it was like Nadine, I'm remembering in my, my mind, the place with the Italian monks, it's yeah. like a stone building on the left side of the road. Yeah. Um, you're right. Like, yeah. Well, okay. So no. I didn't look at that one yet. <laughs> you were right. <laughs> I have a crazy like visual memory when it comes to this stuff, but yeah. no, it's just, that's why doing something like this is so fun with you guys. Cause it's just like really relights the fire and you just like, mm -hmm. yeah knowing how much more there still is to discover that's why that's why the camino is so wonderful and that's why it's great to collaborate and like have voices in this space because like there's no competition right like I, we speak 
to the same people, to different people, but we speak differently mm -hmm. to them. And if you're like me, I want to watch every channel ever about the Camino. Like there's no saturation, right? It's just, okay. uh, give me all the content. <laughs> One of the so, things that I've noticed on that, Kate, is I feel like there are some folks that watch the channel that um, you know, for sure, these are people who are trying to figure out what to do and they're planning and they're trying to figure out like, what am, how am I going to make this way and all that other stuff. But there are a lot of folks that are watching our channels that are just watching because they want to not, they want to be there again. Right. And so they may be watching a video about how to use trekking poles, but, <laughs> <laughs> but actually it's just because they're hoping that you're going to roll some B-roll of Lagronia <laughs> or something. You know? Right, right. But, so yeah, you gotta you gotta show plenty of uh, images and and tell the stories either way. I hope you had as much fun with that as we did. If you want to learn about alberga prices on uh, Camino this year, then you can check this video. Or if you want to see Kate's video from last week where they talked about bunk beds and the experience of sleeping in the bunk beds, you can click that video.